So four last things since I'm on the rant. What I did in my toughest times, what I've always done is, step number one, way back when I was on my own, literally, you know, working as a janitor, sleeping in my car, my 1968 Volkswagen Baja Bug, sleeping in the back seat with a trench coat is to cover me up that I got at the thrift store. Um, true story. I, um, the first thing I did was feed my mind. That's number one. You've got to feed your mind in this environment because otherwise you're constantly fed what won't work. I mean, bad news sells, and there's plenty of bad news, so you don't have to fake it, right? Um, what's wrong is always available, but so is what's right. And if you don't feed your mind, and the way I did it was I'd go to the library, because I'm ancient enough to remember times before the web, and I'd go to the library and I'd read biographies, and I'd read these great men and great women's lives, and I'd read the horrific things they went through, and I'd realize, holy cow, it wasn't that they were, their life was so easy, or they were lucky, or they are so gifted. Their greatest gift was emotional fitness. Their greatest gift was this emotional strength they found inside themselves. And they, they grew as a result and contributed as a result. So I was constantly feeding my mind. I was constantly listening to, in those days, cassette tapes. That's how old I am. Uh, but today, you can tap into that with me or anybody else all over the world and feed your mind because otherwise weeds grow automatically. Pain is automatic if you don't do something proactive. Second thing you got to do, if you really want to face the tough times and thrive, not just survive, you've got to make your body stronger. Because the body and the mind are connected. Fear is visceral. And when you do something explosive with your body, if you go for a sprint or a run, you haven't done it for years, or you go work out with weights and you push through that difficult time just physically, that physical pump, that blood going through your body, gives you that sense of strength and power and will. The mind and body can't be separated. And then thirdly, you got to find a role model and get a plan. And uh, a role model just means throughout my life, all of my books, all of my audio programs are not because I'm so smart. It's either something I screwed up on and I figured it out and then I teach people what I did to turn it around or it's me saying who's been really successful in this area, their body, their mind, their business, you know, their personal life and they turn it around and they've kept success. What did they do? Because success leaves clues. So you've got to have a role model who's made it so you see it's real. And you know, right now in the, in the economy we're in right now, there's so many people that are doing well. But you don't see those people obviously. And so many people aren't, and it's ironic as a society, what do we do? We, we take people that are addicted to drugs and we put them together in a, in a drug rehab where they have no real, mo real models of people that live outside of that. We take people that are in terrible financial condition and we put them together with other people in terrible financial condition and wonder why they don't get better. You become who you spend time with, who you surround yourself with. So in my diff most difficult time, I sought out those role models. I put myself in environments. I put myself in seminars when, I, you know, literally, I was sleeping in my car and I was trying to figure out my first portion of rent. I went to an event. I went to Jim Rohn's seminar, and the very first seminar, many of you know, that got me started in shifting the mental breakthroughs that changed it all. So feed and strengthen your, your mind. Feed and strengthen your body. Every day something. Find a role model and get a plan. And then fourthly, help somebody who's worse off than you are. I mean, no matter how bad it is, somebody else is worse off. And when you can help somebody else, it just puts perspective in your life. And that's what I've always done. There's, there's somebody there hurt much worse than you if you just take a little time. You go feed somebody. Go volunteer in a kitchen. Go do whatever would make you aware that you have something to give, that you're not just at the effect of things. It'll fill your spirit up. It'll fill your soul up. I always say that, you know, the secret to living is giving. And if you... If you can get yourself to give when you're most scared and concerned and really give to somebody else in worse shape, you're going to find your strength will return to you. So, anyway, this is my rant to you, my Labor Day rant. Um, I'm talking 100 miles an hour because I've just come out of being with all these entrepreneurs and I'm so touched and inspired because I know what they were like a couple of years ago. I know what they're like now. And the biggest difference has been the shift in their psychology. 80% of success is psychology, 20% is the mechanics of how to do it. You need both. But if you make a shift in your psychology, if you get that emotional fitness, if you'll create a compelling future, your life will change. And, or maybe yours is perfect, but I bet it could always go to another level.